And then putting a plan together of all those manageable pieces. Do you know exactly how to climb Everest? I didn't when we set out to do it. But what was cool is my husband and his partners who'd already climbed it put together this really good plan in writing that had every step mapped out. Here's the plan that we had. Climb on up to hike, base camp, which we talked about, then climb to camp one and stay the night at 19,000 feet. Now climb to camp two at 21,000 feet, spend a couple of nights, come all the way back down, rest and recover for days, maybe a week. Do it again. Climb through those camps. Spend night at one, a couple nights at two. Now going up to camp three. Ugh, 24,000 feet. Talk about a headache. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, spend just one night up there. Come all the way back down, rest and recover for days or a week. Do it again. Climb through those camps, night after night after night. Climb to camp four, going up to the summit, and then come all the way back down. What you're doing is climbing up and down Everest for nearly two months, April and May. But what it does is just allows us to slowly acclimatize our body. We got to build those red blood cells. Can't do it overnight. And when we have the red blood cells, then what we can do is stand up there for a few minutes without passing out. In my business life, the question always was, how are we going to blow away 300 million? Just go out and start working on it? I don't think so. Same thing. We just had to step away from that business Put that real strong plan together. And then what you do, top professionals in a business like this, in a position like this, really reminds me of what guides do in the mountains. Because to be a guide in the mountain, you've got to, to be a leader, you've got to think like a trusted guide, not like a climber. It's all about those climbers on your rope. It's all about those people getting to the summit. If you can get them to the summit, they're your clients. You'll make them successful and happy, and you'll be successful and happy. One more piece of the plan is doing what you're going to do, specificity of activity. If you want to climb a mountain, if you want to get ready for a high mountain, just go out in the mountains like here, go up where um, it's over 10,000 feet or 14,000 feet, and just climb, climb, climb with a pack on your back, with snow, with the crampons on, all that over and over. But it's not that practical, right, when we're working. So, so I'll tell you how I squeeze this in, because we live and we work at sea level in Seattle. So in our building, I kept a pack underneath my desk. And I loaded it up with weights and then with um, kitty litter, clean kitty litter. Okay? Anyway, it made the pack pretty heavy. And at lunchtime, I would just go into the bathroom, put my workout clothes on, put that pack on my back, go into the stairwell, climb six or seven times as fast as I could up those steps and down. And then I was able to go back into the office, and I could do that in less than 50 minutes. Didn't look too good, but hey, you could do that in less than 50 minutes. So squeezing it in because it was, of course, that priority. And then right after that one day, I sat down with my team and I said, okay, if we could only do one thing today, to blow away the $300 million, what would it be? Well, one of my partners said, well, you know, revenue comes from the client. Bingo. So what we decided to do is just be focused 100% on our clients, their experience, all about them, and try to stop doing the rest of that stuff. <laughs>